Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 19 of season 4 of the F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here for the US Grand Prix, of course. If you missed out on yesterday's video where we jumped in and did the Qatar Grand Prix from La Salle, I would highly recommend going back and checking out, of course, the second of our back-to-back -back sprint weekends here at the Circuit of the Americas. But yeah, championship-wise, though things are starting to go our way dare i say it dare i jinx myself late on in the season a 29 point gap now over max verstappen after he had a bit of a nightmare last weekend out in qatar a 75 point lead in the constructors championship as well it is looking fantastic for audi 2 and 2 motorsport at this late stage of the campaign of course if you're new around here please do make sure to leave a like get yourself subscribed to the channel and for daily f1 my team content although to be fair of course if we win the world championship i will take a short break away from f123 at least my team on the channel nonetheless but yeah us grand prix though here today of course another sprint weekend another opportunity to further build up that lead over verstappen let's hope we can get another clean run well, last weekend then in qatar we absolutely obliterated the field in Friday night qualifying so would love to try and see the same sort of form here today but Red Bull definitely seemed to be a lot stronger around uh, the Kota circuit rather than Qatar last weekend so you never quite know what sort of surprise they are gonna spring just want to make it out of Q1 and Q2 all clean and tidy first of all and then obviously we can focus on the big picture when we get into Q3 setting the times alight here in my first run in Q1 really obviously want to try and get through on the one set of tyres, of course, puts you in much better shape for Q2 and Q3 there. And a little bit hesitant through the penultimate corner as well. But rounding our way into the final corner then here for Q1. Oh, there we go. We do find a bit of time towards the end. Fittipaldi up in P4. But we split the Red Bulls. Starting to get a little bit nervous looking at the skies above us as we head into Q2. Rain is theoretically not on the radar, but track temperatures are dropping um, and the skies are looking gloomy, so I'm, I'm not going to put any money uh, on it staying dry to the end of qualifying here in the USA. So we'll try and beat out the time that we did in Q1. Make sure we lock ourselves into Q3, but yeah, Felipe Drogovic looking very, very racy. Fastest at the end of the first session on a 31-0. I definitely feel like we're carrying a lot more confidence as we head through Q2. Running our way through the Turkey S section to finish off my lap down just one gear that time round. See so yeah, a track actually feeling a little bit quicker as well. Obviously as more and more rubber gets put into the surface out of the final corner. That's going to be a 130.7. And that'll be a 1-2 for the team at the end of the first runs. And there we go then, the end of Q2. Huge news as both Red Bulls go out there. Looks like the rain did arrive by the end of qualifying. But Verstappen will line up for the sprint race in P13. Yuki Tsunoda will line up P14. 2 and 2 Motorsport now have got a huge opportunity, but we need to make sure we get the job done in Q3. Well, the rain has abated then. It was slippery at the start of this final run, but the track, as you can see, has dried up once again. We're going to need some sweat mode here. Not quite sure what the residual grip is going to be like in the surface, but as we round our way through the final corner let's see what we're going to be able to do one chance to make it count here in qualifying
Okay, good job, mate. Really, really well done. That was a fantastic drive. Bring it home. With qualifying finished, it's time to remind ourselves once again of our top three, Mr. Monaco, Russell and Felipe Drogovic. With qualifying complete, all that remains now is the main event. We'll be live and uninterrupted for the Grand Prix tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well, there we go. It is pole position here for the US Grand Prix in Texas. Three tenths of a second clear of George Russell, but Mercedes once again are looking very, very racy here. We cannot ask for more than that. We took a bit of a gamble leaving it very late in the session, only allowed ourselves the one run, but it made it count. We had a slightly better track than everyone else. Let's get into it. USGP sprint race. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. Mr Monaco lines up on pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Drogovic, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Sainz, Fittipaldi, Albon, Ocon, Leclerc, De Vries, Magnussen, Verstappen, Sonoda, Halga, Liam Lawson, Theo Porcher, Dewan, Stroll, Joe, Bottas, and Logan Sargent. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. Right, well, here we are then, trackside for the US Grand Prix sprint race here. Ten laps ahead of us, obviously, before the main event tomorrow. And in terms, then, of tyre strategy, that is rather scary. Looks like we could see some changeable conditions Once in another sprint race where changeable conditions are on the horizon there. How many times is that going to happen? I think that's happened at every sprint race, with the exception of Qatar so far this season, but Russell looks like he's gone the same way as me on the tyres. Drogovic on a set of mediums, but will that rain arrive before the end of this GP? Right, let's do this thing though. Lining up then on the grid, ready for the US Grand Prix sprint. Five red lights. And lights out, and away we go there. George Russell reacting very, very well to the lights. We'll try and get on the battery to defend from him up the hill in towards Selmon, but Russell it's going to say thank you very much there and instantly take the lead of the race. We're actually going to run a little bit wide there, trying to avoid contact with my teammate Felipe Drogovic as we just about re-emerge onto the circuit there. But our Brazilian counterpart is going to also move up into P2. So I was hoping we could get a similar start uh, to what we did in Qatar last weekend. But clearly, whoa, is not going to be the case there as one of... That must obviously yeah, be Pierre Gasly, isn't it, in the other Merc? Eyed up a move down the inside through the S's, but not quite able to make anything happen there. In terms, then, of the rain, what are the teams saying? That's fine, then. Probably not going to have to worry about the rain here tonight. So, yeah, we won't have to worry about that. What we will have to worry about is that horrendous sun um, that always plagues the USGP weekend. I make fun of it every single time, um, but please, at some point, EA... We just have something altered about it on the mini-map, though. Looks like one Red Bull has made a lot of progress on that one. The other one seems to have lost out an awful lot. George Russell still leading the way. We're going to try and line up a move, though, on my teammate. That was... Hello, Pierre. Appalling by me. Just trying to nudge the brakes and instantly locked up there. Tiny bit of front wing damage. Luckily, Drogovic... Gets away with it without any issues. Uh, damage doesn't appear to be costing me all too much, but it was not quite what we wanted at the start of this race. And now we're going to have our work cut out even just to try and hang on there, as you can see instantly. 
Getting a little bit out of shape. No idea what that was all about. Felt like I just nudged the brake. And instantly we just locked up, which we have not struggled with all weekend up to now. Our DRS now enabled as we start lap three. Doesn't look like we're losing too much to Felipe either. Of course, he's going to have much better tyres towards the end of this race, but still able to really attack through the S's. As always, running a lot more downforce, it would appear, than the AI. But, yeah, straight line speed here actually seems quite decent. Clear. Oh, yellows. Someone's got issues. Who's going slowly? Doesn't look to be Felipe. Might be Oscar Piastri a little bit further back. No, it's the Red Bull. Is that Verstappen or is it Yuki Sonoda? Either way... It was the Red Bull that was in front and had had a decent start here. And their season really just seems to have nosedived late on in the championship. Is it Verstappen? Is it Yuki Tsunoda? I think it might be the Dutchman out of the Grand Prix. Seemingly really taking time to decide whether they're going to retire or not from this one. It is Verstappen out of the USGP sprint race. And a hammer blow for his championship hopes. They already look to be fading after last weekend in Qatar, and suddenly it gets a whole lot worse. Oh, hello. Another lockup down at Turn 1, and Pierre Gasly instantly fancying his chances there. It looks like the FIA have managed to retrieve the stricken Red Bull, but I was thinking as well, this has easily got to be George Russell's most OP track inside F123. I feel like every season we've come here, he's either won or been right at the very front. There is oh, Gasly again trying to either move down the inside. Not quite one for a touring car style move but yeah we really are dropping away from our front two but don't really want to battle Gansley too hard and let Piastri kind of get into this any point of course we score today is a huge advantage over Max and will allow us to start even further ahead of him for the main event tomorrow okay team now saying rain 10 to 15 minutes away so still not going to affect us in this sprint race as Gansley yeah keeps just trying to show the nose and it's really compromising us both quite a lot at this stage of the day. Maybe if Piastri now can try and get a run on him, which it looks like he won't, uh, we could have tried to break free, but just over four laps to go. Front wing damage is definitely costing us, but we should, I'm hoping, hang on. Whoa! Pierre Gasly, he just keeps shoving the nose at the inside of turn one. Every time, I mean, we're literally hitting an apex there, and he's still trying to get down the inside. Through that first corner, I must admit, tyres definitely now starting to go off on just lap eight. Not helped, of course, by the wear. But yeah, Gasly is absolutely relentless in trying to seize an opportunity here. And often, an opportunity I don't feel has even opened up for him. Are we going to see him again try it down into the hairpin? Which we'll is really cadence break in. Try to be careful. Luckily, we seem to be able to get very good traction off of the hairpin every single time. Low tyre pressures really helping us get the power down. It does seem to allow us to build up a gap. Yeah, the team already warning me about the tyre wet. So, yeah, clearly we are not having fun in that regard. Well, on to the final lap then of the USGP sprint race. And George Russell looks dead set to make it yet another win here around the Kota circuit. Like I said, I don't know how many he has won, but it seems to be a lot of them around this venue. The rain has stayed away on Saturday, but again, it looks like there's another big threat of a shower uh, in tomorrow's Grand Prix Sunday as well. But as we round our way through this final lap, though, it certainly has been a difficult one. That damage on lap two, you know, really was quite surprised that we picked up the damage that we did uh, in that because it was very little contact between myself and Drogovic, but completely our own doing and happy it hasn't cost my teammate anything there as here comes Pierre Gasly again down the inside. A very aggressive manoeuvre at the bottom of the hill. Oh, we get a bit of a wobble as well. And the one place where we've consistently been stronger than the Mercedes suddenly looks like he's going to get me. As we head down the back straight, they're going to drain the battery. Here comes Oscar Piastri as well. It's going to be three wide as we head our way in towards the final few corners. Oh, no, Oscar Piastri backs out of it. My plan was to try and switch them both off the corner but has Gasly just snubbed me right at the end of the sprint race as we round our way in towards the final couple of corners trying to fill his mirrors as best as possible Mercedes are going to be back on top once again here in the USA George Russell yet another sprint victory Drogovic is going to get back on the podium as well there for the second weekend in a row and Gasly on the final lap of the race he waited he waited he waited he is going to take P3. 
Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Mr. Monaco increases their championship lead. With the sprint wrapped up, we now have our grid line up for the big race tomorrow. Be sure to join us then for what will no doubt be a fantastic race. Well, there we are then. George Russell back on top once more. Mercedes again looking like a threat here in the US Grand Prix in Texas. Felipe Drogovic P2 ahead of Gasly myself there with Piastri beating out both Ferraris. And McLaren yet again... Another point on the board for them. But Red Bull, we kick-started qualifying by saying they looked back on the pace. P13 and a DNF is not what we meant by that there. Verstappen has got his work cut out as we move into Grand Prix Sunday. A 34-point lead over the Dutchman. Yuki Tsunoda is all but out of the championship fight as well, as I'm pretty certain it was down to just the three of us heading into this weekend. Drogovic uh, is now just five points back from Carlos Sainz as well, but what are we going to be able to do as we move into race day Sunday? Here we are then in one of the fastest growing cities in the United States, the fabulous Austin in the great state of Texas. The circuit itself, 14 miles southeast of the city center, has been home to the US Grand Prix since 2012, the latest in a long list of iconic tracks to have that honor. It's the circuit of the Americas then, situated 14 miles outside of the great city of Austin. This is a 3.6 mile lap with 20 corners, 10 to the left and 10 to the right and top speeds of around 200 miles per hour. Overtaking opportunities are available into turns 1 and 12, especially with that rear wing DRS wide open. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. What a qualifying yesterday for George Russell. He'll start today's race from pole position with Pierre Gasly alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Mr. Monaco. Oscar Piastri, Sainz, Leclerc, Fittipaldi, Magnussen, Albon, De Vries, Ocon, Drogovic, Sonoda, Liam Lawson, Halger, Dewan, Stroll, Bottas, Theo Porsche, Joe, Sargent, and Max Verstappen completes the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Now, let's talk about Charles Leclerc. That was a great win in the last race, but can they keep that momentum going into this weekend? Well, there are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out will have boosted their confidence coming into this race. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Leclerc hasn't won a race since Belgium, so I don't quite know what Crofty and Natalie Pinkham are smoking, but either way, I want some of it. Um, again, though, changeable conditions predicted here for the Grand Prix. So my plan of action, to be honest, is actually go rather aggressive on a set of hard compound tyres. Hope that we can make it to the wet period and see where we go from there. Looks like it's meant to get very, very slippery and then start to dry out as the evening goes on. But both Mercs on softs, so they reckon the rain is going to arrive a lot sooner than I do. Piastri, however, joins me on a harder compound of tyres. Although he's only gone on mediums. Right, let's do this thing, though. It is going to be damaged imitation off the start of the US Grand Prix. Five red lights. It's the lights out. And away we go there. And actually, it's not going to be damaged limitation. Contact as both Oscar Piastri and I both tried to go down the middle on the run up towards turn one. And look at that Carlos Sainz there. Almost getting to the lead of the race. But it is the young Australian Oscar Piastri from fourth place on the grid. He'll take the lead. Carlos Sainz was not done with it just yet. As we make our way in towards the S's. For the first time there. And look at that Carlos Sainz from fifth place on the grid then. So everyone moving around off the start of the race. Nick de Vries out of nowhere. Up to P4 as well. Russell's down to fifth place there. As neither Mercedes decided they wanted to get things going this afternoon. As now Russell, you can already see, trying to go on a bit of a fight back there. But Nick de Vries, he must have a nosebleed running up in P4. They're a chaotic start to the US Grand Prix proper here this afternoon. we got yellow flags out just due to the Constantina and up. 
I would assume there. Drogovic, of course, unfortunately taking a grid penalty after yesterday's heroics, but the one we really want to be keeping an eye on today has got to be, of course, Max Verstappen, hasn't it? A lot further down the order. Started this race at the rear of the field. Surely you would imagine he can try and walk away with a couple of points from this as long as he doesn't get any more reliability woes. But trying to put some heat then into the hard compounded tyres at the start of this race. Sky looking very, very sunny uh, early on. Well, okay then. Team saying rain's going to be only 10 minutes away, so soft compound tyres definitely should have been the way to go then. But how accurate oh, is that prediction as we almost pick up a warning at the end of lap one? Fittipaldi now up to P5. McLaren are flying here. I am very intrigued to see how we're going to get on longer term this afternoon. Carlos Sainz fastest. We go even faster, though, as we're now inside the range of Oscar Piastri, as long as we can stay here. Of course, had a little bit of a scrap with him right at the end of the sprint yesterday. But I'm sure both of us praying that the soft compound tyres won't be able to go to the wet period. But how long will our tyres be able to last? That's good. Then the rain seemingly going further away from the circuit early on here so i reckon it will probably be sent to be actually 15 20 minutes away which is actually yeah it takes us to probably close to half distance then this afternoon so those soft compound tires are really going to have their work cut out the astri and i those should be sitting pretty so we've got yellows out someone's got issues further behind have they oh it's a ferrari it must be charles leclerc dropping to the wayside unless it's my teammate drogovic Going slowly. I saw a car trying to peel off. I believe that's Leclerc. It might be Felipe. I don't know. It is Charles Leclerc out of the GP. And we've got a virtual safety car very, very early on here. Uh, but that shouldn't change things too much. Can't imagine anyone fancies taking a stab for a pit stop. Almost, almost got a penalty then for speeding under the virtual safety car. But we just about were able to get the Delta back where I needed it, is still trying to apply some pressure then to Oscar Piastri early on this afternoon. Carlos Sainz knows he's just got to try and pull free at the front of the field, but yeah, will we get a run on the Australian? More yellow flags out behind. Someone else now seemingly got issues this afternoon, and now we have got a safety car. We've got a red flag. I uh, think have the McLarens come together there. I can see Fittipaldi dropping back massively. And how is that going to change things when it comes to the weather as well? Because, of course, that rain is going to be brought in a whole lot sooner now. And there we go. The rain has arrived. So that is very, very interesting. Then We've actually been plonked right into the middle of the rainstorm here. We're going to be restarting on a set. What? We're on hards in wet conditions. Are you having a laugh? It said intermediates. What is that? I'm absolutely speechless. We're going to get a little bit of contact with Fittipaldi down at one, but in the opposite of what happened last season, where we were the only car on intermediates on a wet track, we are now the only car not on intermediates on a wet circuit. There is Yuki Sonoda's going to muscle his way through. How have they not fixed red flags on this game still? What are we meant to do? What are we meant to do? We may as well let everyone go. Verstappen was still down in 20th place, so he's clearly made up no progress early on here. And now our world championship rivals are at the back of the field. I have no idea what to make of that. Oh, no, duh, there's a new strategy. We're on completely the wrong tyres. I'm going to bolt on a set of intermediates then at the end of this lap, but I have never seen anything like this inside F123. We have been put on completely dry tyres on a wet track for... Apparently no reason. Well, neither do I, so why did you put me on dries? I cannot believe this. Ran in our way through the final couple of corners of lap seven. We're only at one quarter's distance this afternoon. It already feels like this race is a complete write-off. Into the pits will come onto a set of the intermediate tyres. That I mean, maybe they'll see us through to the end of the race. We don't know how long this wet weather is meant to stick around for, but I have never seen a glitch like this inside F123. It just, for whatever reason, does not put you on the tyres you've selected under a red flag, and I have no idea why. If anyone knows how to fix it, please let me know 
down in the comments below. But now we're finally going to be on an actual raceable tyre. And we're 30 seconds behind the rest of the field with 20 laps to go. If we get anything out of this, it'll be a miracle unless we get a safety car or another red flag. Okay, we've now got cars peeling into the pit lane then. At the end of the very next lap, don't say they're trying to go over onto a set of the full wet. Poor chair in. Yeah, they're going full wet. So maybe we have still got a chance in this Grand Prix. If all the AI decide to bolt on a set of full wets, because it is meant to dry out again, they're obviously going to have to make another pit stop in this Grand Prix. What a dumb... We've got another safety car. Why well, have we got another safety car? Kevin Magnussen out of the Grand Prix. Okay, the and, well, this out. makes things... I, I, I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> I've lost the ability to speak. And look at that. All of the other AI then into, or most of them, peeling into the pit lane. So everyone believes wet tyres are the way to go at the moment. I refuse to box onto a full set of wets. Because we'll have to go back to Inters later on. And I need any chance I can get this afternoon. Look at that. They're already saying that the rain's going to get less and less again. Uh, this game confuses me so much. Don't say cars are already coming back in to go the other way. Surely not. We've got three cars into the pit lane, unless they hadn't boxed yet still. By the way, we're not going to be last anymore this afternoon. Who is that? One of the Alfa Romeos and the Alfa Tauri. So yeah, I'm guessing they hadn't pit already. Uh, yep, Joe on to full wet. Logan Sargent, homeboy as well, on to full wet tyres. Or well, safety car in then at just the end of lap 11. And already this race has got a championship's worth of drama to it. Carlos Sainz, despite everything, still leading the way at the front of the field. But we have been given a lifeline and a golden opportunity here. We're now hoping the rain's going to stop pretty soon. And obviously everyone is going to have to switch back over onto a set of the intermediate tyres. About how long the rain will last is a very different question. And how we're going to fare in these conditions as well is anybody's guess try and build up a little bit of heat into the rears as we round our way through the final couple of corners that is very very wheel spinny we are definitely going to struggle off this restart but Verstappen our championship rival as well in the doldrums p17 and p18 for the two drivers still with a shot at the world championship but it is green flag racing once again then as we barrel back down in towards turn one, just going to take it nice and easy. Don't want any front locking or anything like that. Uh, we still seem to be competitive there. It's actually getting a nice run. Whoa! <laughs> I was about to say a nice run on Verstappen. We do get a warning for a collision, but almost dropping it into our rival. Whoa, well, oh, AI still breaking very, very early. Constantine and up. All behind each other, are we now going to be able to get a run on the Dutchman? Yes, we are. You can see much superior traction off the corner there. And there we go. We have navigated okay, the one driver that I want to beat more than any other at this stage of the season. He's going to come back at me, though. Verstappen down the inside in towards the next corner. Try to manage the wheel spin. You can see there. We definitely don't have as much grip. We're not far away, but we definitely don't quite have the same amount of grip as the AI at the moment. But... I wouldn't say we're losing much either. Just be interesting to see when they all dive it back in. Teopor a little bit of a lock-up, turn one. Verstappen, though, unable to capitalise. Oh, we almost do the same thing again. Very next lap on the Dutchman. Just be patient, Matt. Sit back. Hey, oh, lock-ups. Lots of lock-ups. Oh, Teopor locked up as well. And he's going to allow us a double overtake then at the hairpin. We'll have much superior traction off the corner, and now up into P16 we go. So clearly can make progress still. That was all a little bit fortunate. So Verstappen immediately is going to try and get past him as well. Will the Dutchman continue to hound me? Oh, Jack doing that. Not able to get the power down the hill. Can we have to hold up around the outside of the Alpha Tower? No. I'm sure he was also just warned, of course, you know. Sister team, big title rival. Coming up behind him, make that car as wide as you possibly can, but yeah, we're definitely starting to find more confidence, more grip on these tyres. The rain definitely is getting lighter as well, so I can't imagine it's going to be long before the AI peel into the pit lane. As There we go, Jack doing trying to go defensive. Not going to happen, though. So we'll get down the inside of the hairpin, and we will say thank you very much. Another one picked off, as we might be able to get a run on Lawson off the corner as well though. I don't know why the AI is so bad 
off that hairpin, even worse, in these changeable conditions there as we'll glide our way past the Williams. Easy on the brakes. Do not want to run into the back of Bottas in towards the corner. And now P14 is ours. So starting to pick off cars a little bit easier. Now we know sort of what grip we can expect in this machine. Valtteri Bottas, of course, his last US Grand Prix. And we're going to send it to the inside of the Flying Fin. That'll be another place. Stroll and Ocon, side by side as we head back up towards Term 1. Are we going to be able to do another double overtake there? As well, you can see Ocon really trying to barge the Canadian out there. And we'll try and get the pair of them off the corner. That'll be one, and that'll be two. Cheeky double overtake, and we're almost back into the points then. Next up is my teammate. Yeah, we are really starting to fly now. I've got no idea why other teams aren't bringing their cars into the pit lane. Team saying 10 minutes left of the rain as we're going to go right around the outside of my teammate Felipe Drogovic in towards the hairpin. Oh, he almost goes into the back of fellow Brazilian Enzo Fittipaldi there. We should be able to get at least one of them off the exit of the corner there and back into the points we go, which, to be honest, was something eight laps ago I was not expecting to say there. Fittipaldi going to try and go defensive from me. Is it going to be a worthwhile defence? For the McLaren. Seems to have a little bit of front wing damage. Whoa, Drogovic sending it in somewhere. Drogovic trying it on on the bear of us. But we'll get down the inside of Fittipaldi through the next corner. And yeah, Dennis Hauger. Could he be on for Williams' first points all season? We still have four teams that are yet to score in this championship. Could Dennis Hauger finally break that curse? There is something has gone on behind. I think Sargent has ran off the road. Uh, but it looks like he's going to be able to keep it going. Yeah, because I do not want another safety car at this point. There we go. Uh, who's that? Um, Fittipaldi into the pit lane. So clearly the AI now is starting to have an R about whether it's worth making a switch. But yeah, surely surely they're all going to go into us very, very soon with how much we're flying around. Oh, then how get get a run down the hill. No point defending it, mate. Come on, you've got a big opportunity here for Williams to effectively cement themselves P7 in the championship, whether it's four points or two. Mark loving that one. And yeah, we are taking bags of time out of these other cars. Well, it seems like we're going to have a second season in a row where the AI just make dumb decisions when it comes to changeable track conditions here at Cota. As now we're going to try and have a look down the inside of Alex Alban in his Alpine. Um, yeah, absolutely bizarre. I don't quite know how only only for Tabaldi so far as Pitt. So he could be on for a massive result for McLaren here because he's taking bags of time out of all the other cars around him. But 10 laps to go with this GP. Yeah, when they do finally box, we are going to have a ginormous lead. I reckon everybody, and I mean literally everybody, has got Ferrari strategists at the moment. No one still is pitting. Are they trying to get to the end on these tyres? I really don't know. I mean, look at the grip we've got out of the final corner. Straight past Pierre Gasly, who we battled with early on and a lot yesterday. We definitely haven't got anything extra in terms of braking performance, but I haven't been confident up into Term 1 all weekend. Almost. I mean, it's, it's still risky. We're still pushing a lot at this point of the afternoon there. But, yeah, Yuki Tsunoda... Maybe still fancying his chances to beat Max Verstappen over all this season. We go right around the outside of him, though. And that'll be another place claimed. And how, when we're doing this to all these cars, is no one thinking, oh, it might be worth taking a gamble onto those Inters. And we also get a run, then, on Oscar Piastri as we head down the hill. Never expected to be back racing the Australian after the nightmare early on, but we will take it as Nick DeFries trying to hang on to P2 in his McLaren car at the moment. We're going to get a run on George Russell, though, as we head up the back straight, drain the battery as best as possible. And we break down around the outside of Georgie Boy. He's going to try and keep the nose there. Surely we'll get right around the outside, though, which we will. And suddenly now we are back into the podium places here. This is one of the weirdest races I've ever had inside F123. Down the inside of the freeze will go. It's like they're stood still. And I said that 12 months ago here. Utterly bizarre. It doesn't like we'll be running on a dry track soon, doesn't it, Mark? And yet no one else is even on intermediates, with the exception of Fittipaldi here. And I mean, even he's carving his way 
through some of the slower traffic, but yeah, we're going close to five seconds a lap faster than the rest of the field at the moment. Are they ever going to box away from this set of wets? I do not know as yellow flags out someone. Alpha Tauri running into issues. Don't be a safety car now. Could really do without a safety car. I, I assumed, to be honest, that we'd take the lead when everyone had to peel back into the pit lane. I didn't assume we'd get it done on track against Carlos Sainz, but taking the lead is taking the lead, and we are back to the front of the US Grand Prix, despite everything that has happened so far this afternoon. This, this is why you never give up in Formula 1, because the game's broken sometimes. We're rounding our way through the final corner, six laps to go of the GP, an 11-second lead now over Carlos Sainz, but, I mean, the only thing I can assume is that the AI might try and go intermediates, uh, sorry, go from full wets to dries even, to the end of this Grand Prix. Whether the track's going to dry up enough is wait and see, but, yeah, I mean, we're, we're basically there, aren't we? We could go on to a set of softs pretty soon. Well, less spray is being kicked up every single lap off these intermediate tyres, so I wonder if with four laps to go it's worth bolting back on to a set of the softs. Let's wait and see what Mark says. Right, I say we dive in then at the end of this lap. It's always what Ant Senna said. You have to be on the right tyres at the right time, and so far none of the AI doing that, and haven't been doing that for about the last 15 laps or so. Such a weird race here from Kota, but yeah, this could be... A little bit of a gamble. It might allow Science to retake the lead momentarily here, but I'm so intrigued to see whether the AI are going to peel into the pit lane before this race is down and out. I still don't think we picked up a warning yet. We might have had one early on this afternoon, but we've done pretty well on that DRS front as well. There we go. DRS enabled. Will the AI finally pit? That is the real question at the moment. They are limping around on, e on full wet tyres, sorry, on a track now that the FIA deem to be suitable for dry tyres. We're going to box onto a set of softs for these final four laps. Will we see Carlos Sainz peel into the pit lane? Right, let's go. Come on. No! Let's Carlos Sainz still staying out there. What on earth is this? we just got to make sure we get these tyres up to temperature nicely and keep going. Um, but, I mean, yeah, surely we're going to be... 10 seconds a lap faster between now and the end. None of the AI willing to pit still. And instantly I can feel the grip through the first sector. It was a worthwhile change. Only thing I can assume is the AI are so scared of getting undercut by each other that none of them want to risk it this late in the day. I mean, surely this still gives Fittipaldi a big advantage over those full wet runners on his inters, but I want to be screaming at Drogovic telling him to just box late on in the day. 15 seconds now to Sainz. This is just beyond stupid. Well, I can only assume this is the game's way of apologising for leaving me on dry tyres on a wet track, because now the AI are on full wet tyres on what is a bone dry circuit here late on in the day at Kota. I've kind of set myself a mini target now of winning this race by a minute and we're only 30 seconds ahead with a lap and a half to go, but that's the way this race has turned into. It's well, really, it's been a farce, hasn't it? I mean, really happy, of course, for us getting the big result we needed. But, yeah, Verstappen, we are going to massively open up the championship lead once again over the Dutchman here. Although, that being said, it was his mechanical issue that left him as far down the order as it has done there. We've got AI, no idea what to do. Some of them are peeling in, some of them aren't. Looks like Jack Doohan, just in front of me. He's going to be peeling, sorry, he's peeled into the bit lane then, and we're going to start lapping cars here late on in the day. But, I mean, yeah, really, I suppose, for all of the AI, it's not worked out too badly, of course, because they've all done the same stupid strategy. But we were half a minute behind anyone early on this afternoon. We've been completely screwed over. We boxed onto that set of intermediates like we had to. Safety car came out. Everyone else went full wets worrying about the conditions and we decided to brave it out on the inters knowing the track would dry up again and the AI just have never once there we go science has finally finally decided to peel into the pit lane with just one lap to go as is almost everyone else there I think Yuki Sonoda opting to try and stay out just for one more lap in this Grand Prix so it's Esteban off on Yuki Sonoda that decided to stay out there Fittipaldi as well 
on his intermediate tyres, but what a stupid end. Looks like Haas, they're going to get a payday from this one. Haas potentially on for a P5 come the end of this afternoon's running, but rounding our way through the final few corners of the US Grand Prix there. It's, oh, I don't even, oh, the results are going to look bizarre. Looks like Haas are going to get a double points finish despite not scoring all season long, but rounding our way through the final corners of the US Grand Prix. We are going to again extend our championship lead over Verstappen by another 25 points. We have one hand on the championship. It is victory in Kota. I'm so sore. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, what a race. At the end of the day, it is all about raw pace. And our winner had it in spades today. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. see how the driver's standings have changed. Mr. Monaco increases their championship lead. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Miss Monaco. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. The owner-driver's team moved to the top of the table. It was also a strong Grand Prix from Haas F1 this weekend. Fantastic work from the American team to move themselves further up the table. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time out. Be sure to join us once again as we continue to bring you all the excitement of Formula One. Well, there we are then. The end to one of the wildest races we've ever seen. And we didn't even get the gap up to a minute. Esteban Ocon there, 58 seconds back come the chequered flag there. Enzo Fittipaldi, after all of the heartbreak early on in his career, it finally comes full circle, and he joins us on the podium there with a valiant effort to P3. Carlos Sainz beats out Teo Porcher, who gets 10 points for Haas as well. That all but cements them uh, to P7 in the championship there. Sonoda, De Vries, Russell, Piastri, and Lance Stroll all getting points on the board as well there. Drogovic, disappointing result down in P14, but he beats out Verstappen. And yeah, our championship lead looking mighty healthy as we head into the final four Grand Prix. There's 60 points now, the gap over the Dutchman. And if I'm not mistaken, if we win next weekend that in Mexico, and if Verstappen failed to score... That will be it. World Championship done and dusted with a handful of races to go. But yeah, Sonoda 117 back. Verstappen's now closer to his teammate than he is to us once again in this championship there. Sainz with a good result uh, brings himself a little bit closer to Piastri and George Russell. And constructors wise now 105 point lead over Red Bull. We really now can take it, you know, just... Don't risk anything in the final few Grand Prix. Do a Nico Rosberg, get the results we need, and nothing more here. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure I leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and we will be back tomorrow then, ready for Mexico, a track where we are still yet to lose a race on F123. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters that you can see currently on your screens. If you want to join them from as little as £1 a month, it would be massively appreciated and you help support my work. You also get access to weekly updates from myself with everything going on behind the scenes with the channel. But yeah, a massive thank you to the names you see on your screen and we'll be back very soon with a brand new video.